Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden video. We are inside today because I'm actually going to be working on potting up some house plants. Um, specifically the video or the plant that started all is this one who is outgrowing his pot. The dirt is down to like here and he is coming up out of his pot. Um, and so I'm bumping him up to the next size pot get him some nice dirt, let him keep growing. And then I have a few other plants that need potting. So I found this pot on sale at Lowe's. And let me see if I can pick this guy up. And I went searching for a plant that would fit in it. And I found this little guy. Ha ha ha. On the clearance rack, you can see some of his leaves are a little brown and need some love, but I thought he would fit nicely in that pot. But he already had his own pot. And so I got him, but then my mom was like, well, you're gonna put that one in this one. You have this white pot now. So she got me this little guy who is a little I don't know what he is. I don't remember. Some kind of pine. They all got tags. Yeah, Norfolk Island Pine. So we will go over all the names. And we're going to be putting these three up for sure. I also have... The puppies are playing right behind y'all. I also have this little African Violet who is just sitting in this pink pot. Sometimes I prefer to just set them in the decor pot, in their nursery pots. That way I can kind of put some water in the bottom of the bigger pot, let him drink up the water and then pour it out as opposed to needing to put a saucer underneath the pot. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that today or not, but this guy is also new to my collection. And you can see he at the very least has some leaves that need to be trimmed and taken care of. But while I'm not a huge houseplant person, I have pretty much doubled my collection with the addition of these two new, well, these three new plants that I just picked up. Um, I have two or orchids in my kitchen window that I picked up also on the clearance rack. And this is their third time blooming. I don't know. My best friend has tried orchids for years. She can never get hers to rebloom in Texas. I do the bare minimum with mine. I give them water like once a week and I spray them with some orchid food when I remember and they, they love it here. So I'm knock on wood. I'm just going to let them keep doing their thing. I have this cyclamen that I love. Um, and it is growing all funky. It's supposed to grow straight up, but no matter where I put it in this kitchen, even if I put it in the window, it does this draping thing and I like it. So I'm just letting him continue to drape. And my Christmas cactus, which already bloomed this year. You can also see the very edge of the one amaryllis. It was a pink ice amaryllis I had for Christmas this year and it bloomed for Christmas. Two of the blooms are spent and the other two are just going out. So I'm gonna enjoy her for as long as we can, but we're going to get started by replanting this guy because he really needs the help. Now, I don't know what kind of plant this is. So if anybody knows, please let me know down in the comments. I had a whole little box of these little hose kinks that I use for my irrigation system fall into this pot outside. So this uh, repotting serves two purposes of getting the plant a new pot also retrieving all my hose clamps because they're not cheap. I, uh, when I saw they fell in here and I went to go retrieve them is when I realized this guy needs a new pot. He also has lived outside on my porch all summer and he does great outside in the heat, but he dies outside in the cold. He's an indoor plant, but I don't know what kind of plant he is. Um, someone, I don't even remember who, Someone very nicely gifted him to me at my husband's funeral. Um, and I was not all there at that time in my life. And so my mom took care of this guy for me for a couple years, but she had him out on his, her porch 
And so he would kind of die back every winter and then come back up. And uh, I told her one day we were outside last year and I was like, I really like that plant. What kind of plant is that? And she was like, it's your plant. I've just been taking care of it for you. So I took him home. I put him on my porch. He had one stem from dying back to, for the summer. And now he has so many stems from being outside. And I've got him this new pot, bumping him up a size. I'm going to bring him inside for the winter so that hopefully he will not die back. I don't think he's supposed to. We've got some dirt left from the last project. I, I kind of doubt this is going to be enough for all of our projects. I think it might just be enough for this one. But I've got a whole new bag outside of here. That's barely going to be enough for this one, but we'll see. We might have to clean the kitchen when we're done with this. So if anybody knows what kind of plant this is, I would really like to know. Um, my mom has a couple ideas, but I just don't know what kind of plant it is. So I want to get the base of this plant up even with the top of our planter. Let me get them out of here without doing any damage. Let's do this over the sink. So loose. There we go. All right. Well, we only poured out half of it, but oh, I was gonna say there's a plant tag in here. It's blank. It has this in here. It says Burgundy Glow. I don't think that's right. It might be. I'll Google it. He has nice roots now that he's up, even with the surface. He's got all these dead leaves from being out in the fall. I'm just gonna kinda push down. I definitely need more dirt for him, let alone for the other plants. But he looks happier. And has a new pot already. I'm just going to kind of help unwind some of these leaves. I already went ahead and cut out those like two dead leaves branches. I cut those out before we started, but you'll want to trim off any leaves that are not doing great. All right. I'm going to go get my other bag of soil. So y'all stay here. I'll be back. Now I've got a sink full of dirt. I don't, I don't think that was a good plan. I didn't think this through. Ugh. Well, I did think it through. I thought it was a good idea. I thought it was a little dirt. It was a lot of dirt.
That's fine. It didn't hurt the sink. We got out most of it. I'm going to go get the dirt. <laughs> All right. Got some more dirt. Now, he's going to stay in this pot. I will have to put drain holes in the bottom. Always best to have drain holes on your pots so that your plants do not get waterlogged. They don't need as much water in the winter. So I'm hoping I could get by with it for really a month or two. It's January 1st today. I don't know when y'all are watching this. I have a lot of garden videos still scheduled to go out. Oh, um, And in our zone, girls, come on. It gets pretty warm pretty fast. It's actually very warm today. Like I'm wearing short sleeves and flip flops outside. It's not cold except every so often. It really is just, you know, we live very warm, sunny Alabama. So I can probably put this guy back out beginning of March. He really only needs to be inside for like two months. And I'm going to be gone for part of that time. Mom and I are going to Australia. And while my brother will be house sitting and he is, he's a good direction follower. He's not a good plant taker care of her. I tell him to water the plant, he will water it. He won't know like if it's too much water, not enough. I literally will film him videos showing him like, build a watering can up this much. Water each plant for like five seconds, three seconds, 20 seconds, however much it is. Eventually, if I get too many plants, my plant collection outgrows my brother. I'll start having problems when I go on my cruises. So I'm going to try and leave this guy no drain holes for two months before I can put him back out on the porch. And then since this pot is only a smidge bigger than his last pot that he was in for six years, um, he's got a lot of room around the outside. I don't know if he'll be ready for a new pot by next winter or not, but if he is, we'll address the drain holes then. I think that worked really well. I'm gonna go ahead and take plastic off the outside. You can always put a drain hole in it if he starts getting too yellow too fast and just put a plastic, clear plastic saucer underneath. It didn't come with a saucer. And I prefer matching ones like this when you can get them. All right. As much as I like plants and gardening, I am not a huge mess dirty person. Whenever I watch Laura and she's like, oh, this dirt is the best feeling. I, I love the plants. I get what she's saying. I don't like that. It's not my thing. All right, so this guy does need a little bit of trimming. We're just going to take off anything that is brown and crispy down here. Might be everything. So this guy is a silver dragon says he needs medium to high light water when top inch of soil dries and keep above 50 degrees. So most of these plants I could put on my porch in the summer if I wanted, but I would like at least some plants inside 
And while I love having the pretty plants around my kitchen window, when I'm doing dishes, they make me smile. I really want some plants that I can put in my office. And so that was a big reason why I picked up some of these more ferns, less flowers, things that could go in more medium to low light. Now this guy has, as you can see, quite a few brown crispy edges on some of his leaves. I don't want to cut those leaves off though, because then he will be left with like only two or three leaves. And of course leaves are how they get their, their nutrients from the sun. So we're going to leave those. I don't know. I, I don't know that they will ever recover some leaves, a lot, a lot of leaves. Once they go brown and crispy, that's kind of the, the end for them, you know, and they are just always going to have a brown and crispy part, but he has new pretty leaves coming up. We will wait until those get nice and big. And then if the older leaves are still brown and crispy, we'll cut them off at that point so that he always has some nice leaves to sustain himself. I think we're gonna have to just switch to our hand for this pot because he is almost the same size as the pot. So this guy, our pine, and my little Rex begonia are going to all go in my office where they can hopefully handle the lower light of my desk. I still do have a big window in there. It's just further away from where they'll be sitting. Hey, come on guys. The dogs are just not sure why we're playing with dirt inside and they want to go outside. I get it. But you have a doggy door. You could go outside. They want me to go outside and play with them. Now, I know a lot of people who do house plants uh, top dress their, their plants with rocks or moss and, and we could do that. Um, I never have really, never really had a lot of indoor plants that needed it. <laughs> like these bigger leafy, leafy ones, most of the indoor plants I have don't really need top dressing. But Laura from Garden Ants, so let's see how many times we can mention her in this one video. She always says when she's doing house plants that she leaves the top clear for at least a couple weeks so she can see how they're doing with their water, if they need more water, less water, whatever. Love that pot. And so we are definitely, we're gonna leave everything uncovered. I have some moss, so I may top dress some of these with moss eventually but not today. This little pot is so funny. Oh, they just cut a hole for this. I mean, that's not a bad way to do it. Especially like if you were doing a little hostess gift or something. That's cute. All right, so. This pot also has no drainage holes and there's no way to make drainage holes in this one. So. With this is a Norfolk Island Pine. It needs bright medium to medium light, weekly water, and keep above 50 degrees. So the same requirements as this one, which like I said, is kind of what I was trying to do. Get plants that could do that medium to bright light. My office is still bright. I've grown hyacinth bulbs in there for the spring many times, and they have enough sun to germinate and sprout and bloom. So the only thing we could do with this guy is leave him in his pot so that we can 
Oh, he's so dry. That dirt from those big box stores, they just don't water them nicely. And I, I wet my dirt with my hose um, before using it. That way it has some moisture. It doesn't like clump together crazy, but you want it to have a little bit of moisture when you're potting new plants. So the only other thing I could do besides fully potting this guy is leave him in his little garden container, put him in here, take him out to water him, and then just use the pot more as a decorative pot. Like I said, I do with my African violet. Okay, princess, thank you. If you want to bark, go outside. But this is a big enough pot. I think he'll be okay if we just water him lightly. Ferns and pines and things like this, they don't need that much water. So we won't be over watering him. He should be okay. But again, if if we watch him and he's struggling, he's on the struggle bus, we'll switch him. We'll put him in a different pot. It's not the end of the world. I never would have picked this guy. I'm not a big fan of this deep green leaf anywhere in my garden or in my house. But mom liked him and he's very soft. I am a textural person. And while I'm not a big fan of the deep green leaf, um, he had the same light and water requirements, and I thought he would look nice with the silver dragon and the rex begonia, since that's that silver leaf, and then the rex begonia is that burgundy, and he does. So, while I wouldn't have necessarily picked him on my own, I have to do that with clean hands, he does look nice, so... I'm not mad. I'm not mad. We're going to sweep everything. I'm going to go ahead and plant this African violet because he falls down in this pot in a way that makes him very hard to water. And I'm afraid I'm going to damage him pulling him out to water one of these times. So I'm going to plant him. How did this get in here? He does have a built-in drain hole in the bottom of this pot. Even though I've never used it. But let's go ahead and open it. And a lot of times these things with drain holes, I'll just set in the sink to water. That way, they can just drain into the sink. Then once they've been in there for like a day, I'll move them back to the windowsill. It's not that big a deal. I don't want them, you know, draining on my desk or anything. I should probably wash that knife now. I was gonna put him back in the drawer. But this guy's not going on my desk. He's going by the island or the kitchen. And he'll be on that little cake stand. So even if he does drip a little bit, he won't drain crazy amounts. He'll be fine. And I think the plant will be happier not being pulled in and out of his little house so much. Try to push some dirt up against the sides. So we have to shove it down in there less. Let's cut the bad leaves off here. Now I've never had an African violet. I've heard they can be temperamental. I'm not quite sure how we'll do with this one since I tend to do best with a uh, low maintenance plants. But his tag said he wants to be within one to three inches of a window. So he's going directly in the kitchen window. He's very dry. I 
we will water him with our cyclamen and orchids at least once a week. Sometimes the cyclamen needs to be watered more than that. So we'll just see. That dirt down around the root ball, all the sides. It's a benefit to doing this outside. The kitchen would not be getting as dirty, but just dirt, sweep it up. ever be a big houseplant person if only because I don't love plants that need a lot of maintenance even in my garden I have everything on a drip irrigation system I mean we did that on a video if it needs like personal attention a lot less likely to do that but I like the low maintenance ones I like having the life inside the house. Uh, my cat, Lily, who passed away a year ago when I got my first orchid, um, she ate any plant, bouquet, arrangement, any flower of any kind I ever brought in the house. So I could never have any house plants with her. And I had her for 16 years. I would much rather have her than any plant of any kind ever, but that is no longer an option. So after she passed, I saw those orchids on the sale rack and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to get a plant from inside my house. I've never been able to do that. I've had her since I was 15. So literally never been able to do that. And since then, I've just been growing my little collection. All right, I'm gonna leave the Rex begonia in here. This little pot does have a drain hole, but he fits in here really well. I would had him in the island or the kitchen window and he was just getting burnt to a crisp. So I moved him and he's doing much happier. And I think that in the next couple months, He's grown almost double since I moved him at the beginning of the month. I think in the next couple months, he's going to need a bigger pot. So we're just going to leave his little pot and this little decorative guy. And uh, when he outgrows this pot in the next month or two, we'll bump him up uh, to a different size pot. And that'll be good. So we've got our Sylvan Silver Dragon. I wonder if this is like... I don't know, I was gonna say a philodendron or something, but it doesn't say. We've got our pretty pink African violet. We've got our Norfolk pine. We've got our unnamed uh, funeral plant. We've got to get it a name, that's awful. And our Rex begonia. And we are all done <laughs> for the day. I hope you guys liked this kind of talking video with the house plants. If you have any care instruction tips for me, uh, let me know because I have never cared for any of these plants before except for this one and this one that I've had for the last year and they're very similar. Uh, so I'm hoping that this one and this one are similar but no, I have no idea about this guy. So We'll see y'all in the next video. Have a very good new year no matter which time of the year this video goes up. It might be February when you're watching this and I will see you later. Bye.